Hello everyone, uh, Vinicius here. What I'm going to talk about today is this, uh, the service I found some, uh, some time ago called uh, partsbox.io. So I found, I stumbled upon this when I was searching for a tool uh, to help me organize my inventory of parts. And that's precisely what this tool here does. As it says here in the title of the page, keep track of your electronic components. Uh, so basically what it does, it's a, like an inventory system. Uh, uh, next, so spreadsheet on steroids. It's actually much better than that because I, I was gonna, you know, organize my lab. You guys can see some uh, some drawers uh, behind me here. So I had all these this things uh, laying around. I wanted to organize a little bit. I was gonna do like an Excel spreadsheet for it, but I, I, I thought mom, someone must have done something better and dedicated for electronics. So I just Googled a little bit and I luckily found this. Uh, too, and I even uh, I even posted about it on the EV blog forum um, around the time I found it, September first. So you know, and and the interesting thing is that this guy here, Jan Richter, who is the founder of Partsbox.io, he he showed up and uh, uh, was part of the discussion. Very nice guy. I exchanged a few emails with him after that as well. He's uh, keen on getting feedback on his tool, etc. So very interesting. I'm gonna put the link to the uh, thread here um, in the video description as well. Uh, you guys should check it out. But let let me go talk about the service itself. So uh, let me just cover pricing. <laughs> I was looking for a free service, and this is a free service for hobbyists and makers with some limitations. So you can see it's like 2,000 uh, distinct parts, 400 storage locations, etc., etc. I think for hobbyists, it's uh, more than enough. I mean, it's uh, certainly enough for me. So I was pretty happy with that. But if you were not, there's some other uh, options here. For example, Lab Workshop, you get some uh, additional stuff in here. Same as company, you get the same as before. Plus API access, lot control, blah, blah, blah. So I guess with this, you could even uh, connect it to your ERP uh, system. And you know, uh, for whatever need you have, so you could use it as a, it as a front end for feeding your ERP system, or you know, who, with an API you can do many things. So yeah, that that's a nice thing maybe for a company uh, kind of thing. So, uh, so that's it about pricing, and uh, we're gonna do what we're gonna do next is talk about the tool itself. So I'm gonna log in, in with my ID, and we, I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, you know how how it works and some quirks, some things I don't like, some things I like. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. All right, let's talk about the tool itself. So I logged into my account in here. Uh, so what, what you guys can see here is the the main two uh, main two uh, tabs or <laughs> main two screens of it, which is parts and storage. So what you want to do first is create storage locations. So for me, it's like uh, all the shelves in here in a row uh, column kind of arrangement. So that's why you see uh, Gavitato is uh, shelves in, in Portuguese. That's why you see that. But, you know, number one, which is this one here, uh, column A, row one. So that's the first one, etc. So that's how I did it. But you can do it whenever or however you want. Uh, you can create new locations just by going in here, typing it a name. So it's nothing more than that. Okay. Uh, one thing that I don't like too much is that you cannot delete locations once you create them, even if they not, do not have any history attached to it. Because I could understand you not wanting to delete a location that has had stock in the past just for historical reasons, uh, uh, you know, and keep you keep things consistent. However, you can archive them at least. And I have one here that I created for testing purposes that I archived. So, yeah, you can do that. But it's not, you know, maybe when you're when you're just playing around with it too, you want to have the ability to delete stuff. So, well, you don't do it. You, you can't do that. Okay. Uh, but that's just a minor annoyance. Uh, here in the storage uh, piece, you can go click on it and see which parts you have in it and how much, you know, the overall stock count and you know it can have some other uh, you can have some other operations like you can rename or archive okay uh, before I proceed much further let me just uh, mention some uh, other things that I think are relevant uh, one thing is that 
that has been clarified in that EV blog thread where we discussed this with the founder, Ian, is that this thing here runs mostly on the client side. So that, that's what maybe you guys can grasp that it's very light or runs very smoothly. Part because of that, it runs on the client side. Uh, but there's one more reason why I wanted to mention that, which is the fact that it then uh, it does not require beefy servers or anything expensive for it to operate. So why why am I mentioning that? Because that's one concern I think some of you may have uh, when you start using a tool like this, and I had to some extent, which is the fact it's a free tool. The guy is just one guy doing it. Nothing stops him from pulling the plug from it at any point. So when I mentioned that in in a thread, Ian was very nice and and, and said, yes, you're right, but th what I did to keep it sustainable, uh, even though, of course, his plans are to make money with it, but what he did to keep it sustainable and, and keep it free for hobbyists and etc., is that it runs very light on the server side. He doesn't need, uh, you know, a lot of infrastructure to run this thing. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, you can also, I think if you go in here, uh, you can at any point in time export your data in a JSON format. <laughs> that would maybe be a problem because I would not be able to parse that easily. But at least you can download your data at any point in time if you were, uh, you know, concerned about, you know, this uh, going away. So, yeah, at least you have that ability to do that. And if you then are... are programming savvy uh, a programming guy you can then go parse this data or even if some other tool pops out you can then import that in here as i'm here you can also see that you have ability to import data from some other uh stuff like you know uh, xml files and uh you can also destroy your data uh can change your password all the all the standard stuff okay but if I go now back to the parts, uh, this is where probably the heart of it is, right? This is where your parts are kept. It's a list. I have about, uh, well, well, exactly 100 parts in here. So it's it's not large, but it's not like a very small database, and it runs very smoothly. You guys can see uh, in here. And just as you create storage uh, bins or storage locations, you can create parts. Uh, and this is one cool thing about it. It's actually linked uh, with Octopart, okay? So you can just search here, whatever you are looking for, 1N4007 diode, uh, and it's going to bring you all the, matching, uh, all the matching entries from Octopart. The search here is limited. Uh, so if you're looking for a very specific part, sometimes I had I had trouble with this myself where I, I search, I cannot find it because it shows just a limited number of results in here. There's You cannot page it. So, uh, and it, I, I, I never tried, but I don't know if you can do like, you know, uh, you know, plus, for example, if you are looking for a Fairchild thing, plus Fairchild. Let's see if it works. No, yeah, you see, so yeah, it, it's limited. Um, in its searching capabilities, and you don't have like an advanced search option, which maybe could be nice to have in here. But anyways, what I found is that sometimes it's easier to go to octopart.com yourself, search it in there, find the exact part number you want to add, and then come in here and add it here. So yeah, that's one way to do it and circumvent or work around the limitations in the search capability. Uh, but once you find it here, then you can just click it, uh, and it's going to create the part for you automatically. And that's what, what is good about it. It's going to bring all the data from this huge database into your, uh, it's going to link, of course, the information to your entry here. So you have instant access to data sheets and stuff like that. So that's that's very cool. Uh, once you add your part, you can then add stock, remove stock, or you know do whatever you want. Uh, you can just choose where you keep it, uh, how many of it are you adding, and the price. Uh, the price in the hobbyist version here is uh, actually just a field. It's like a text field, I think. You cannot add currency, etc. So it's kind of limited. But uh, you know, it's maybe good for you to keep a track of how how much you paid for it if you want to sell it or do whatever you want to, you know, estimate your bond costs for a project, something like that. So that's about it. Uh, parts, at least you can uh, delete, <laughs> so you do not have to keep the trash. Uh, 
you created just for testing purposes? Because, yeah, th that's one thing that uh, is also a minor annoyance to my liking, but maybe some other people prefer it that way, which is the fact once you click it on from the search, it creates the part for you automatically. It doesn't give you a prompt for confirmation or anything. So if you wanted to just look at the part and confirm that's what you wanted to add, no, you don't, you don't get that chance. You have, well, by doing that, you create the part and then you have to delete it if it's not the one you want. So... Just a minor OS, but you have to cut some slack maybe because it even says in here, you see, it's a minimum viable product. So uh, as the name says, it's not complete. For my users, actually, it's pretty much what I need. I don't need anything else, but some people may need more, more uh, resources or more features. One that has been mentioned in a, in a thread here, and I think uh, Ian said he's going to be adding and I thought it was interesting, is a project uh, BOM. So you could have like a subset of parts set aside for a certain project uh, in here. So that's that's cool. That's uh, when he adds that, it's going to be cool. And But there's one more thing I wanted to mention, which is the fact that Ian also mentioned at some point he's going to add uh, like a social layer to it. And do not get, uh, I know this sounds like kind of lame, but... Let me try to explain what that means. It's actually very nice for markets, for example, where I am in, in Brazil, where you don't have Mauser, DigiKey, or, I mean, they're going to ship in here, but you're going to pay through your nose for in, in port taxes and etc. So you, we don't have local distributors for us to get parts next day delivered, as you guys do maybe in US, if you're watching from US or some other countries. Uh, and here it's hard to get parts except, you know, your 555s or your BC548 or all the jelly bean stuff, maybe you can get easily in the in the local store. It's maybe going to be fake, but let's not go into that. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is that it's not as easy to get parts in here as it is maybe in some other countries. What Ian has said he would maybe add here is uh, the ability for you to make your, if you want, make your, your inventory of parts available online. So when people go and search, they can find, hey, you know, this guy who lives, you know, uh, in my city or maybe in a neighbor city has the part I'm looking for. So I can get in contact with him, get in touch with him and buy it from him or maybe, you know, exchange it with something I have or even get it donated to me. I don't know. Maybe that's, uh, that. I mean, at least for me, that's going to be a good feature when it, if it ever comes to to production version of it, uh, of the tool, because it's uh, it would uh, resolve a problem I have in, in the market I I am in, which is uh, one of restricted availability of parts. Um, I think that's all I wanted to mention. Well, one more thing I was thinking about the other day is that when you create a part, it's good that you are linked to Octopart, but maybe you could also link to other services uh, if. Maybe that's some other feature that could be nice to add because sometimes, I don't know, maybe you don't like the Octopart description or whatever. You can change it, of course, but, you know, maybe if you had links to uh, parts.io or, you know, the SIVA database or whatever, maybe that could also be nice. If you if you maybe even link the same part to different databases, uh, so, you know, you could have more references to your uh, more fonts of more sources of information. Uh, for that part. So maybe that's another thing that would be nice. But all in all, just to conclude, uh, I think it's a very nice tool and it has already proven valuable to me because you, you can just search what you need. If you need a fat, you're going to instantly see what you have at hand. It has already proven valuable to me because I was a, about to buy more of this, of this transistor here, which here in Brazil costs well, it's, I mean, it's not a huge amount of money, but it's like 10 bucks or something. It's very expensive, actually, if you think about it. Uh, and I, I had already two on hand, and that's what I, I ended up not using them, but I was about to buy more of it, and it, I had it on hand, at hand, I mean, somewhere there in my, my shelf. So if I didn't have it organized in here, it would be, uh, I would have bought more of it and, and wasted money, so... That's what this thing can do for you. Of course, I know some people are going to say, yeah, I can do that in Excel. Sure, fine. But this is this is just very nice and built for this purpose. You can just create the parts linked to Octopart, as, as we said before. Get instant access to your data sheet in here. So it's very convenient. Uh, definitely more convenient than Excel, which is what I was going to use as well before I stumbled upon this tool. So, yeah, you guys may want to go have a look at it and uh, judge for yourselves. But uh, uh, my, at least for my 
for my use here, it's been very useful. So hope you like it. And you can also, of course, go and discuss this in a thread here that I'm going to link. Uh, and, you know, get in contact with Ian. Uh, he's a very nice guy. I exchanged a few emails with him. Very keen on getting feedback on his too and very keen on adding uh, stuff. I, I mean, I... I I get him to do some minor minor uh, enhancements to it already. So yeah, uh, he's a very nice guy, looking uh, and and willing to get feedback and and do stuff for you. So go have a look at it. Uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, thanks for watching.